In 2015, the Rotary Club of Derby began planning for its 100th anniversary, to be marked in April 2018. One of the ideas was to seek out a suitable project within the Derby community that could be celebrated in that year. A small team of Rotary members, comprising Richard Benfield, Peter Branson and Angus Curry, embarked on a journey to identify that project. The overall brief was to find a need within the city that could benefit from the hands-on service by the club's members. The first steps involved a meeting with the City Council's Neighbourhood Partnerships team, and it was quickly observed that the Arboretum Ward would offer a good focus for a start. Nothing obvious was offered by the neighbourhood officers, but they did promise to keep an eye out for something suitable. Thoughts turned to the possibility of finding a run-down building that could be brought into community use. It was inspired by the Bamberbrook Community Project in Stockbrook Street. In three months, with just £30,000 and the hard work of volunteers, Bramblebrook Community Centre had been turned from a wreck to a venue with a bright future. A local MP said, The work reminds me of the old BBC Home Makeover show, Changing Rooms, as he reopened the site. He said, It was a wreck. It really was. To come today and see this transformation is amazing. And then in August 2015, a news article appeared in the Derby Telegraph featuring Spiral Arts, two professional visual artists with over 15 years experience of delivering participatory workshops. The article portrayed how Jenny Anthony and Maureen Elliott had won a People's Health Trust grant of £42,000 to fund a celebration of the 175th anniversary of the Arboretum, a year-long series of meetings and workshops to develop a Cultivating Friends objective. So the Rotary Club got in touch with them and explored the possibilities of how it could help. Initially, the club participated in the anniversary event with a stall attended by various members. Meetings were being planned involving the Parks Department, Sustrans, Spiral Arts and several local residents. The idea of reforming the Friends of Derby Arboretum emerged and by the end of 2015 a formal group was established. Rotary members helped in the group's development, assisting with the creation of a constitution, election of officers and eventually the registration of the Friends as a charity. Rotary was still keen to identify a more tangible project, and the Community Parks Officer, Mick McNaught, showed a few of the members the old Bowls Club building, the Joseph Strutt Pavilion. The old bowling green was already being cultivated as a community garden, but the long abandoned building was indeed a wreck. The roof had collapsed in one area, allowing hundreds of pigeons to roost in the upper floor. It was like the Marie Celeste as the Bowls Club had simply locked the door one day and left. The place was littered with debris, pigeon guano, dead pigeons, and the various of the club's paraphernalia, such as crockery, cooking utensils, toaster, kettle, etc. This was going to be a challenge for anyone. It was especially made difficult, given we could only inspect the inside by the light of smartphone torches, as the power had been switched off. Mick outlined the process if the Rotary Club wanted to take up that challenge. They would first have to submit an expression of interest to the City Council. It was agreed that the Club should certainly start the process, but in the name of the Friends of Derby Arboretum. It had to be noted that Rotary, being a service organisation, would happily facilitate a process and provide volunteers, but it could not provide funds. And in any case, the main beneficiary of a refurbished building in this location would be the Merging Friends Group. All Rotary fundraising is aimed at charitable outcomes, not providing capital funding. However, the club's members, being from diverse professional backgrounds, are well equipped to inject expertise into a service project. An expression of interest was duly prepared and submitted. 
It took a while, but by May 2018, the Friends Group received a letter of intent. Negotiations then commenced to agree a lease between the FDA and the City Council. One of the club's members, being a solicitor, was able to offer advice pro bono, which greatly assisted this process. from the Police and Crown Commissioner's NICE Fund for funding the refurbishment had been submitted and in May 2018 an offer of an award of £25,000 was received. The grant had to be used by June 2019 and so there was great pressure on settling the lease to allow time to complete the first phase of the works. The scope of this phase included repairs to the roof and chimney, removal of all debris, removing the chimney at first floor level, installing a new ceiling, and generally making the building weatherproof. It was therefore a great relief when in early 2019 the lease was signed. This left the FDA five months to get Phase 1 completed. The lease is for 25 years, giving the FDA full access and responsibility for maintaining the building. This would allow the FDA to fulfil its objectives by having a base within the Arboretum and a place to engage with the local community and visitors. The builder, MJ Building Services Limited, commenced the work in March 2019 and completed the first phase within the June deadline. Recognising the need for substantially more capital funding, Applications were made in 2019 to various grant bodies, and two of them eventually responded positively. It has to be said that this community-based project does have great merit and stacks up well when it comes to attracting support. The bids were quite comprehensive, and the case had to be convincing to stand out against the competition. However, the Friends Group had demonstrated its clear intentions to engage with the community in and around the Arboretum and Normanton areas offering tremendous added value and a worthy cause. The estimated cost to complete the refurbishment was now in excess of £60,000. Initially, a pledge of 7500 was made in early 2019 by the Garfield Western Foundation, conditional on securing the remainder of the project funds. This was valid for two years, so the challenge was on to raise the balance of funds. Thankfully, the National Lottery's Reaching Communities Fund came good, and in July 2019 we were asked to submit a full proposal. Following an in-depth review of costs, a full proposal was submitted in December 2019. In March 2020, the FDA received confirmation that the balance of funds would be forthcoming. The FDA then obtained positive news from Garfield Western Foundation that they would honour their pledge. This coincided with the onset of the coronavirus, impacting on the builder's ability to recommence the work. However, in July it was agreed with health and safety measures in place, small units of the workforce could begin. Essentially, only one trade could work at a time so that social distancing could be achieved. As we make this video, the building is close to completion and could well be open for general use by the end of September 2020. Given the likelihood of ongoing restrictions because of the pandemic, any public use will have to be limited, but certainly small meetings can start to use it. It will have its own postal address off Morrison Street, and the FDA has agreed to rename it Loudon Lodge in order to honour the architect and landscape designer, John Claudius Loudon. Getting to this point has taken five years, but both the Friends of Derby Arboretum and the Rotary Club of Derby can be justly proud of what has been achieved. This marks the dawn of a new era for the FDA and its place in the local community. The doors will soon be open, as we say, Welcome to Loudon Lodge.